All right, we're back with the second part of our first lecture, which deals with Git. As I said, it's the software we use to uh, share code among each other and uh, collaborate online. And same as with R, we need to, of course, install it on our computer first. So this is why, again, in the lecture notes, you will find a reference to the software's homepage. And here you can download it for your operating system and basically install it, just uh, go with all the default values in the installation. The only thing you might want to change is that it asks you what your favorite editor is. And there you might want to go from Vim to something else, um, maybe to Notepad++, which is what I use often. Um, I've put a reference in here. But um, yeah, just go with uh, what you want there. Um, also, if you don't understand what I mean right now, you will see it, the prompt during uh, during your installation that um, that at some point you will be asked what's what's your favorite editor, and then you will know what I mean. All right. So once you've installed it and uh, got it to work, um, you can go back to our studio, and there you can. If you're on Windows, you need to go to Tools, Global Option, go to Terminal, and there you can instruct R what terminal or what shell it should use when you open a terminal here. Because Windows has its own shell and this won't work with Git necessarily, and this is why you need to um, choose Git Bash there. You will see in the menu um, what I mean. And uh, once you've done that, then you can go back to your console and instead of using the R console here, well, this is where we've uh, written R code, you can go to the terminal and there you should see the git terminal. And so here in yellow, this is what it should look like. In yellow, you see my current working directory and for instance, um, you can check Git version. So if you uh, installed Git properly and it's R can't connect with it, as I said, maybe you will have to restart R, st uh, R Studio so that it works. Then you should see something like that here. Otherwise, it will say something like command not found, which uh, then of course is something for you to worry about. So you will have to figure out what's going on there. Maybe something went wrong uh, when you try to install Git. In any case, what you also need to do then if you look at, at the lecture notes, then you will have to, once you don't have to do it every time, you have, just have to do it once, you will have to, after you sign up with GitHub, have to tell uh, Git your information you used with GitHub. So for instance, it may look something like that, and then you can just um, sequentially um, execute one line of code after another, and the last one, this one here should then give you an output and there you should see that the information you put into Git before, so this and this, um, should be in the output there somewhere. So this is just um, so that GitHub or Git can communicate with GitHub. That's basically it. And if you've done so, then you can um, create a new repository on GitHub. So a repository is one of the many vocabulary that uh, Git uses, which you will need to get used to it. In the beginning, it's a bit hard, but uh, you can manage if you work, uh, work with it a couple of times or work with Git. And so re repository is where our project lives. So basically it's all the files and whatnot and all the history of what we changed at what point is uh, saved within the information of a repository. So if you're new on GitHub, you probably won't have a good repository. You can just click onto the plus sign here and add a new repository. This will open a page which will look like this. You can just uh, add a name here, make it private and then add a readme file. If you've done that, then afterwards it should look something like this. I've called the repository git test here. So this is basically now our repository and this is one of the first things we need to learn about uh, Git. Git does not solely work on your computer alone, 
but also on the so on your repository on your local computer but also on a repository on a remote site like github so basically you always have these two worlds and the idea of this is to synchronize the code from your local repository to the remote repository back and forth and this way you can um, work on or collaborate online together so that you can always synchronize your changes this is basically what uh, git is about and if I, as i said this uh, repository now lives only on github if i want to get it onto my computer i will need to clone the repository which i can do using the link here i will just copy it and switch back to r again to r studio and then i can just write git clone and then i paste the link in there and as you can see it's uh, it works now well, git is starting to uh, to work and it's cloning all of my files now in my working directory i now will have a new um, directory git test because that's the name of my repository so i can change into that directory so let's change into it so that's git test you could also use your regular um, on Windows you could just use the file explorer and go to that directory and see that you will have a new folder there and you can just log into it. Here I will just use for simplicity the command line so I don't have to switch back and forth between what I show you and what I'm doing on my computer. So if I execute ls it will show me all the files in that directory which is the readme file which is the one we created earlier which just uh, had the name of the homepage, um, the name of the repository in there. So now I want to change it. I can, again, you could just open the file in, on your computer with whatever editor you choose, write something in there, save it, and then um, yeah, work with Git again. Here I'm doing everything through the Git shell. It's just, yeah, so I don't have to switch back and forth. So I'm using the nano editor to open readme. check I should read me all right so here I have uh, I see now all I have is this line git test in here which was the headline I saw earlier in my repository on github so here I could now change I don't know um, write something in here something fun all right, now that I have it, I can save it. And now my file on my computer is saved. Again, you could just do the same thing again, uh, just with your um, regular file explorer and a regular editor. You don't have to do everything via the terminal here. Okay, if we check our uh, status now, Git will tell us that um, we have changes that are not staged for commit and that there are no changes added to commit. So basically what this means is that git now noticed that we changed something in the repository, but we haven't uh, staged and committed it. Basically, if we want to make a change permanent, so if I want to make a change permanent to later get it to my remote repository for synchronization, I will have to go through two steps. One is the staging step, and one is the committing step. And it's a bit tedious that it's two steps, it's just the way it works. So let's just stage the changes now, which we do by adding it. So git add and then the file name readme.md. So we added it now. If we check the status, it will say that there are changes to be committed. So it now says there's nothing else that changed that we didn't put into our stage, into our staged area. And now we can commit it to our repository. This will make it sort of permanent. So the change will really be um, put into the history of the repository. So we can write git commit. Then we have to write uh, 
minus m for the message. So basically we have to document what is the change here. So we write, we changed the readme file with something fun. That's what we did. And so now uh, Git will commit this and it will, uh, yeah, it, it will know what changed from the previous version to this new committed version. So basically we've just created a new version. And now, of course, if we look at our repository, if we um, load the site again, we don't see any changes. We still know that it looks the same. And the reason why is because we only committed on our local repository. So it's not yet in the remote repository. So we need to, what, what it's called in uh, Git vocabulary, we need to push our local repository or our changes to the remote repository. So this is quite easily done. We just write git push. So now it's uh, pushing and as you can see, there is no error or whatever. It just uploaded all my changes to git. And now if I refresh it, then you will see that now we have something fun in here. And this is the idea of um, of Git. We go through multiple um, iterations of making a change, staging on com and committing that change, and then working on the next issue, staging and committing that too, and then working again on an issue. And then we can we don't have to push every commit. We can also have a few commits. For instance, if we work on separate problems in our code, we can just work on this, solve this one problem, stage and commit all the changes there, and then work on the second problem, stage and commit all the changes there, and then we can have now two commits, and these we push to our remote repository, and in our remote repository, both problems we worked on will now be solved. This is basically the idea. And this doesn't necessarily only work with code, you can also, uh, so with uh, programming code, you can also think about if you write a thesis in LaTeX, then you will also write lines of codes technically. So you can keep different versions of your thesis using Git as well. And for instance, this helps you if, we, if you want to explore a bit or if you want to try something out. For instance, you, you've already written chapter two of your thesis and you're thinking, well, maybe I need to rewrite it a bit, change the structure or whatever. Then you can on Git, what is called create a branch. And on this branch, you can make all the changes. So basically this new branch is, uh, is your, um, your try out, try out area where you can try things see how it looks and at the end if you feel like uh, this new version is way better than your initial chapter 2 then you merge all of the files into the main branch and then your main document will look um, like the last version on the other hand if you're not satisfied with your new version you can just discard this old uh, this new branch and um, work with what you had originally and this way you can yeah, keep separate versions at the same time and later on combine these two into one version. So let's try this in our uh, fictitious example. So on, on our terminal we can for instance create a new branch. So git branch, let's just call it new chapter. So this will create a new branch. As you can see here in the uh, blue parentheses, we are right now on the main branch. And if I want to change my files or experiment or experiment with a couple of things, then we just move to the other new branch, which we do by checking it out. So get check out new chapter. And now you can see I'm working on this new branch. And there I can again change my uh, readme file for instance i can write 
new chapter lines here and do something else here then I save it again there's some errors that are thrown due to um, issues with Windows don't worry about those and then again I can add them again I can commit them new chapter version whatever and then I can push my changes again um, ah, in this case I cannot push it because um, on github there is not a new branch don't worry about it we'll just not do this right now so instead um, Oh, we can also just do this the way they suggested. So basically on GitHub we didn't have this branch yet, this new chapter branch. So this is why there was an error in pushing. So this is what uh, why we um, not only pushed it now, we also told GitHub to create a new branch there. And again, if we switch to Firefox we can uh, refresh it and what we see now is that well it looks the same but if we now look at the new chapter branch we will see that things changed here so on our new branch we have a different version of our project and we could merge it now into Uh, into our repo into our main branch. For instance, if we say we are satisfied with these new lines or whatever we added here, then we could on our local machine we could just uh, uh, switch to main to our main branch again. So we have to check it out. So we're on main again, as we see here, and now we say okay take the changes from this other branch and merge them into our main branch. So this is done via git merge. Um, we have to say, what's the name, new chapter. And now I can git push my main branch again because it changed now. And if I look at my repository on GitHub now, I can look at my main branch and see that my main branch now looks exactly as my branch before that. And this way, with this back and forth, I um, yeah updated, I used my most recent version to um, yeah to update my repository. So this is only the very basics of Git and there's more you can not only merge you can rebase and cherry pick and whatnot so basically you can do multiple commits and push them or then just if you're not satisfied with all the changes you made on one branch but just want a couple of commits then you just only merge those and there's a lot you can do with it and it has a lot of flexibility but it's really hard to explore at first and so if you're not used to uh, working on the command line, this is um, quite tricky. But thankfully, there is an online. Um, there's an uh, online. You will find a website called Learn Git uh, Learn Git Branching, which is this website here. So there's a link here and there. You can just follow it, and there you can explore. This will lead to will lead you to this home page and there you can explore multiple levels here so um, basically these are all small exercises you can use to get used to working with the command line to tell git what it's supposed to do so here for instance the first level let's look at it there's always a bit of explanation it tells you well git co commit extends your current working tree by another commit and so on 
and here what you see is that you can have some exercise you can work on there is a um, a window which resembles the command line and here for instance what you see is if you uh, write git commit it creates another commit and you can do that again and then you already um, solved the first um, problem and of course this was a really simple one but um, if you go through all of these problems they are really easy and if you're stuck once then you can also go click on the question mark here and you can also get help um, get solutions and so on and so your exercises will be to go through all of these and through most of those I think um, just to for, which will help you to understand how git works and what is happening with these branches and is checking out and whatever don't uh, don't feel bad if you've got confused with my um, explanations if I've already used too much terminology this will be all explained in this learn git branching website so I really encourage you to work with that which will um, help you to understand git well then one last thing of course um, you can same as with our studio our studio is basically the um, graphical interface for R you can also get a graphical interface for um, Git and one of the most popular or I don't know if it's the most popular but one popular at least and one I prefer is Git Kraken which I've also written in the lecture notes is referenced here somewhere where is it maybe I've written it somewhere else in any case it's written somewhere and if you follow the reference to the website then you can download git kraken here and uh, basically this is nothing but a um, graphical interface for git and there are a lot of these things like staging and committing and all of that can be done using the interface for instance if we open git kraken so this is what it looks like i could for instance clone my repository with a url or i can open this one so i just open um, let me just find the repository so git test i've just opened the git test repository and here you can see all my changes and whatnot and you can just check out for instance branches uh, by the click of that for instance now you're on the new chapter branch here there's still something unchanged or you can go to a specific commit and see what were the changes here if you look at this this is what we changed here and so this graphical interface really helps you a lot um, but you don't really necessarily have to use git kraken i recommend it because i think it's um once you understood git a bit better it really helps you so this graphical interface helps you even more to do the standard tasks and yeah so that's basically all i wanted to cover on git and yeah you will see in the exercises that will use git a lot actually you will have to hand, uh, hand in all your solutions only via git so you will need to figure out how it works and this is why i strongly recommend that you start out with the learn git uh, branching website and yeah um, learn the fundamentals there and then hopefully working with the something like git kraken or uh, the command line to actually work with your lines of codes uh, for your solutions may become even easier all right so that's it and then i will see you in the next video